now we come to Superman Returns, one of the more hotly debated entries in the series. After a 28 year hiatus, this movie came around to invigorate the franchise while simultaneously retconning the third and fourth films. Well, at least we're off to a good start in terms of concept. But the premise of this one might be a little frustrating to anyone expecting it, to directly tie into the events of Superman 2 in the way that that film tied into the first. Presumably sometime after the events of the second movie, Superman left to search for remnants of his home planet, Krypton. Returning after a five-year absence, the Man of Steel finds that many things have changed. Former flame Lois Lane has moved on, having settled down with her boss's nephew, Richard White. To make matters worse, or better, depending on your point of view, she now has a son and sports a Pulitzer Prize for her article, Why the World Doesn't Need Superman. In addition to trying to reintegrate into society as Clark Kent, Superman must also deal with the return of Lex Luthor, who has been released from prison and has reclaimed his fortune thanks to a tricky inheritance scheme. The criminal genius has discovered the Fortress of Solitude and plans to profit off of the ancient Kryptonian technology. Brandon Routh does a reasonable job of embodying Christopher Reeve, even though I would have liked to have seen him put more of his own spin on it. As Clark Kent, he can be goofy and friendly while adding a bit more of an everyman subtlety, which helps when he has to carry those scenes with minimal dialogue. As Superman, though, he could stand to be a bit livelier and less stoic. While not as good as Reeve overall, he definitely has the presence and does a pretty good job considering he's trying to adhere to the other films. Kate Bosworth, on the other hand, doesn't fare as well. She tries to pull off the plucky professionalism of Lois Lane, but she just comes off as bland. In addition, she seems too young. Maybe a more charismatic actress like Stana Katik could have pulled off the deeper portrayal of Lois Lane that they were going for here. James Marston is surprisingly memorable as Richard, aka the other guy, believably acting as a very capable and understanding husband. Bosworth actually has better chemistry with him than she does with Ralph. And there is a cute little bit of irony in the fact that he can fly a plane. Don't believe Lois can find another man who can fly? Well, there you go. One thing I like better here than in any of the previous films is the character of Lex Luthor, played this time by Kevin Spacey. While Hackman was more fun and fit the lighthearted nature of the previous films, Spacey's distinct brand of dry humor and sarcastic deliveries are a better fit for the character and make him a more believable threat in terms of the cunning and intellect of Lex Luthor. Some of the minor players, such as Frank Langella as Perry White, Sam Huntington as Jimmy Olsen, Parker Posey as Luthor's henchwench Kitty, and Eva Marie Saint as Martha Kent, don't get much to do in the grand scheme of things, but they play their parts pretty well, and to be fair, it's not like these characters got much to do in the originals either. I don't really know why Cal Penn is one of Luthor's henchmen, though. Come to think of it, the following year he was in the terrible excuse for a film known as Epic Movie, which made fun of Superman Returns. Was saying yes to that some kind of retaliation for not getting anything to do in this film? Or am I just thinking out loud about an actor who may have just wanted a paycheck? Furthermore, why am I still on this subject? Moving on. One thing I really like about this film is the fact that those involved really wanted to make it in the spirit of the classic Richard Donner entries. They've got the theme music, they've got the characters, they've even got Marlon Brando via archive footage. However, that also kind of works to the movie's detriment, as many felt it didn't have enough of its own identity, which goes back to Brendan Routh sticking so close to Christopher Reeve's performance. Also, this one sadly fails to immerse the audience in the period setting like the Donner movies did. The whole thing just feels a bit too modern to really fool anyone. Although the music still uses a handful of the classic themes by John Williams, the main score is done by Brian Singer's frequent collaborator, John Ottman. This is an area which fares better, as Ottman's cues manage to feel uniquely dynamic while at the same time paying homage to Williams. The two styles just meshed easier. Another positive aspect is obviously the effects, which do a good job of selling everything that's on screen. The practical sets are all distinct from each other and fairly sizable in scope, and the film doesn't resort to CGI as much as you'd expect. In addition, Brian Singer employs similar directorial techniques as he did in his X-Men films, taking real time with the story and never letting anything progress too fast. He lets the audience digest what's going on in every scene. 
However, I don't think it works quite as well here due to the smaller roster of characters. In the X-Men movies, we had teams of mutants with a plethora of powers and personalities. Here, with only one superhero and a handful of central characters, audiences may feel that that time may have been better spent on exciting action scenes. The sequences that we get, such as the plane scene, are great, especially given the large scope throughout. However, in a two and a half hour movie, I think we could have used one or two more. Overall, Superman Returns has an admittedly slow pace that may serve to bore those looking for a more traditional summer blockbuster, but it makes up for this with a poignant theme of moving on that is backed up by fairly solid performances, great visual effects, patient direction, and an appropriately grand scope. Sure, it could stand to be a little more unique, and it doesn't always work as well as it wants to, but it accomplishes what it sets out to do, which is to deliver a more emotionally charged take on the Man of Steel.